Good day, little friends and storytime parents. Welcome to another storytime session with your friendly senior library tech, Miss Tiffany, at your MWR Community Library. Today I have picked some of my favorite stories to share with you, so let's begin. All right, so my first book of the day is called The Berenstain Bears on the Moon. Here we go. On the night before the bears' big day, they looked at the moon far, far away. Then morning comes, today is the day they will go to the moon far, far away. The crowd counts down, the rockets blast, they wave goodbye, they're off at last. Do you want to help me count down? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Two little bears and one little pup, they are off to the moon going up, up, up. They look back down, but they can't find their treehouse home. They have left it far behind. Where is their town? It is hard to say. Their town is now far, far away. Now their feet no longer touch the ground. They are out in space. They float around. Two floating bears and their floating hound. Up ahead, it's a shower. It's a meteor shower. They will have to go through. Turn on more power. Will they get to the moon? They will. They must. Their slogan is to the moon or bust. Behind them, the earth is now so small. It is nothing more than a small blue ball. The pup begins to wonder when his paws will touch the earth again. Then up ahead, it's there, the moon. Buckle up tight, we're landing soon. Landing, they are landing in a cloud of dust. They said they would, and they said they must. They made it to the moon, and they didn't bust. Down onto the old moon, they step with pride. Two bears and a pup along for the ride. Now the bears have many things to do, but first they look around, they enjoy the view. Then they fly their flag, they take moon notes, they collect moon rocks in their moon rock totes. Then they try some jumps, high in the sky, moon jumps almost make you fly. Now it's time to get behind the wheel and explore the moon in their moon mobile. Two bears on the moon, they are all packed up, ready to go home now, so is their pup. Will their ship lift off? Will their rockets burn? Will the two little bears and their pup return? If the two little bears use all their skill, they will return, they will they will. Two bears and their pup in the rocket ship on their way back home on their back to earth trip. To their friends on the ground, to their house safe and sound. Safe back on earth, they step out of their ship. Wow, said the bears, that was quite a trip. Now they look up at the stars, very, very far away. Will they go up to a star? Well, they may, someday. The end. What a great book. I love that book, On the Moon. Okay, friends, are we ready to read some Shakespeare, the kids edition? I hope you are. So this is a little bit longer book, but I think we can handle it. Are you ready, friends? So this is Romeosaurus and Juliet Rex 
by Mo O'Hara. Here we go. This is such a fun book. Ready? Nearer tale made a child laugh more than Juliet Rex and her Romosaur, Romeo Sor. Once upon a time, 150 million years ago, two families both alike in lizardness lived in the swampland of Verona. Romeo Soros's family were herbivores. Yay! Ferns for dinner! Yay! So in case, friends, if you didn't know, herbivores mean they eat plants. Plants and flowers and grass and all that yummy stuff. Julia Rex's family's family were carnivores. Yay! Herbivores for dinner! Yay! So carnivores, they eat meat. All the good meat stuff. Okay, so we have herbivores, all the yummy vegetables and grass and flowers. And then we have over here carnivores, all the yummy meat. All right, here we go. You can see why the families didn't really get along. One day, Julia Rex was stomping through the swampland on her way to the dinosaur ball. Do my arms look small in this? She asked her nanny, Nurse Adactyl. Of course, dear, Nurse Adactyl answered. Meanwhile, Romeosaurus was clomping along with his friend Mercutio Tops on his way to crash the ball. Now, usually when a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops crash a ball, you would know it. But this time they went in disguise because it was a masked ball for carnivores only. The carnivores really know how to throw a party and Juliet Rex was waving her tiny arms in the air like she just didn't care when she spotted a dinosaur who she had never seen before. He switched his tail at her to say hello. She thumped her tail back to say, I might be casually waving high or I might just be swatting a prehistoric bug. Your call. Romeosaurus went over and the two dinos danced. They giggled, they talked, they played, and they started to become friends. Do you want to get something to eat? Juliet Rex asked as she led Romeosaurus over to the buffet. Auntie Gladys! Romeosaurus gulped. Romeosaurus rushed to help Auntie Gladys off the buffet table and take the apple out of her mouth. Wait! You're an herbivore? Juliet Rex asked, taking off Romeo Soros's mask. And you're a carnivore? Just then a fight broke out at the dinosaur ball. Apparently, Mercutio Tops had poked Juliet Rex's cousin, Tybalt Rex, with his horns while dancing. You better go, Juliet Rex said, sneaking Romeo Soros out during the commotion. Will I see you again? Romeo Soros looked back and smiled. That night, Juliet Rex looked out from her clifftop balcony. Romeo Soros, Romeo Soros, wherefore art thou, Romeo Soros? Psst, down here, Romeo Soros answered. Stegosauruses aren't very good at climbing. It's the tail, really, and the weight and the complete lack of claws to grip anything, and... There's a stone ramp over there, Juliet Rex interrupted. Oh, thanks. Once again they giggled, and played, and talked and laughed, and they became true friends. My family would never want me to be friends with you, Juliet Rex said. I mean, I can never invite you over for dinner. You would be the main course. My family wouldn't like it either, especially Auntie Gladys, Romeosaurus said, sighing. Then what can we do? Juliet Rex wondered. <sighs> when Nurse Adactyl woke the next morning, she found that Juliet Rex's bed had not been slept in, and she found a note. A herbivore is my true friend, so off I go to Swampland's End. 
Nurse Adapto flew down to the herbivore's home and tapped her talon on the door. Auntie Gladys answered, Ah! She screamed and then fainted. Mercutio Tops pulled Auntie Gladys out of the way. Nurse Adactyl showed him Juliet's Rex's note, and he showed her the note Romeosaurus had left for him. You have always been a friend to me, but a carnivore has set my heart free. Nurse Adactyl made a face. They're not very good at poetry, but they do seem to care a lot about each other, even though they're so different. They have bad poetry in common, I guess, Mercutio Tops added. We need to find them. They're headed for the tar pits, and that's dangerous for any dinosaur, herbivore, or carnivore. Nurse Adactyl flapped her wings and carried Mercutio Tops above the swampland until they reached the tar pits. They could see some things floating on the tar. It was Romeosaurus's feathered hat and Juliet Rex's backpack. We're too late, shrieked T Nurse Adactyl. We should have let them be friends, Mercutio Tops cried. You're right, Nurse Adactyl sobbed. Then maybe they'd both still be here. But we are here, Juliet Rex said, as she and Romeosaurus came out from behind the boulder. My little dino! Nurse Adacto gathered Juliet Rex in for a wingy hug. Mercutio Tops spluttered. But your hat! The backpack! We were just looking for a big stick to fish them out when you both showed up, Romeosaurus said. So, can we be friends? Juliet asked. And just to be clear, carnivore friends don't eat other friends, right? Romeosaurus added. I can never eat a true friend of my darling Juliet Rex, Nurse Adactyl said. Then she whispered to Romeosaurus, but if you break her heart, you're in a sandwich by lunchtime. You got it? So it's a deal. Carnivores and herbivores will be friends, Mercutio Top said, and they all shook hands on it. Well, except for Juliet Rex, as hers wouldn't reach, but she nodded in agreement. And they lived happily ever after. The end. What a great story and a different take on Shakespeare, huh? Alright friends, thank you for sharing this special reading time with me. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye bye!